In this video, we'll take a look at setting up a virtual environment that provides optimal conditions for learning how to use Backtrack, whether it's for forensics or network defense, for a Windows computer. To begin with, we'll go ahead and set up the virtual machine, and we're going to install the Windows operating system. So to start, I'm using Oracle's VirtualBox to create my virtual environment. I'm going to go ahead and choose New. We're going to create ourselves a new virtual machine. I'm going to choose Next, and type in the name of the virtual machine. I'm going to call this one Win. Windows XP and you can see the operating system has already been chosen for me as far as, far as providing the conditions to run this operating system so I'm just going to go ahead and hit next and I've got enough RAM here to spare uh, I'll just set up 512 megabytes of RAM to use with this operating system and I'm going to go ahead and choose to create a new hard drive and so we're going to go ahead and hit next and the hard drive or create new virtual disk wizard comes up so we're going to go ahead and hit next I prefer to use a dynamically expanding storage. Uh, this will make it so that we only use, uh, or our computer only takes up what's needed for our operating system. So the more we put into the actual virtual machine, the larger this grows up into the limit that we set. If I hit next, I can set this limit here. So this is the name of the virtual machine's hard drive right here. It's called Windows XP. And it's going to be a VDI. It's going to say .VDI. That's the file it's going to create for us. And I'm setting the hard drive limit. Now for Windows XP, I'm going to go ahead and set 15 gigabytes. If you're using Windows Vista or Windows 7, you're probably going to want to make this maybe 20 gigabytes or maybe even 25 gigabytes. But I'm going to go ahead and create 15 for my Windows XP. I'm go ahead and hit Next and Finish. And that's going to create the hard drive for me. If you look here, the boot hard drive is going to be called Windows XP VDI. And that is a 15 gigabyte hard drive that it's going to be able to grow to because it's a dynamically uh, expanding hard drive. So we're going to go ahead and hit finish. And now I've got my Windows XP virtual machine created. I do need to install the operating system and I've got the operating system disk in my CD-ROM already. So if I go ahead and hit start now, you'll see the up comes the wizard and we're going to go ahead and say for the first run wizard, I'm going to go ahead and hit next. They're asking me where to choose the installation media. Now I do have the operating system installed already on my D drive. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And I'm going to go ahead and hit finish. And we're going to see this load up. Now instead of taking you all the way through this video, I'm going to go ahead and set up the operating system. And we'll come back here on the video once this has been set up and completed. And I've now installed Windows XP on this operating system. So I'm going to let this go ahead and load up. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create a dual boot environment for Backtrack to be able to use Backtrack within my operating system. And so what I'm going to do as soon as this loads up, I'm going to go ahead and shut the machine down. Just choose Start, Turn Off. And so what I want to do now is create a second hard drive that I can install Backtrack on for this Windows XP operating system that will allow me to dual boot between uh, the Windows XP as well as the Backtrack operating system. So I'm going to go ahead, while this one's selected, I'm going to go ahead and choose Settings. And then we're going to go to Storage. And once we're in Storage, we're going to go ahead and say to add another hard drive. And in this case, it's going to be this icon here, Add a Hard Disk. And we'll choose to create a new disk. And I'll go ahead and hit Next and I want this to be a dynamic expanding storage, so I'll hit next again. Now I set 15 gigabytes for my Windows XP and I want to make them different sizes just for the fact in this case I can easily identify which hard drive I'm working with by size and so I'm going to go ahead and use 20 gigabytes for my size on this particular one. It's, it's 5 gigabytes larger than the last one and I'll just call this Backtrack. And I'll go ahead and hit next and I'll hit finish and you can see that I've got uh, both the hard drives now connected to this computer. This one here is connected as a primary master. This one here is connected as a primary slave. And I still have my host drive, which is my CD-ROM that's within my computer itself, connected for me to install any additional, uh, or basically the live CD that's available for Backtrack if I wanted to. Now, I'm not going to use the live CD for Backtrack. Instead, what I want to do is I want to use the ISO file that I downloaded, which is another option, rather than using a CD within my CD-ROM. And so what I want to do for this case is instead of using the host drive E, I'm going to go ahead and choose up here the little CD icon that we've got here, and I'm going to choose to use a virtual CD DVD disk file. 
and then I'm going to browse for the location of my ISO file that I have downloaded. And so I downloaded that to the downloads folder. So I'll click on downloads and there's my backtrack for ISO file that I downloaded from the website. I'm going to choose open and you can see that it gets loaded in here now for the CD-ROM. It's actually going to be linked directly to the ISO file. This saves me from having to actually burn the ISO to a CD and then throw the CD back in my CD-ROM drive to try to load the operating system from the CD. So this is a direct connection to the ISO file itself. I'm going to hit OK and we're going to go ahead and choose Start. And now this is going to load up and since we've got Backtrack in here and it shows the ISO file, it's going to actually load up Backtrack here first. You see I've got a couple seconds, 25 more seconds left to choose my option. I can choose to start backtrack here or I can scroll all the way down. I've got quite a few different options. I can choose to boot from the first hard drive. If I did this, this would actually boot the Windows operating system back up. And so this is going to be installing from the ISO file. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And this is going to just go ahead and load up the backtrack just like it would as if it were a live CD. And when we get to the boot prompt, we're going to begin here. So I see root at boot or at BT for backtrack. I'm going to go ahead and type in start X. This is going to start the X Windows system for this operating system, giving me a GUI to work with. And now I'm going to choose to install this actual operating system. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on the install. We're going to choose to install this now. My time zone is New York, so I'm going to actually choose the, for the New York to be set up. I'll hit forward. And I'm going to go ahead and use the USA, so I'll hit forward. And so now this is where it was important for us to have created a second hard drive to use for the installation. By default, Backtrack is going to want to try to resize the partitions that are currently installed on the Windows XP hard drive. And you can see that you've got a before and you've got an after. And what we want to do is we want to set this up so that it actually uses our second hard drive, which was the slave drive. And so if I go click on this guided use entire disk, and then I've got the option here of my first hard drive and my second hard drive, which is the slave. And you can see it's HDB, referring to my second hard drive, and this one's HDA. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the IDE right here that's a slave. And you can see that before there was nothing on this one. So this is the correct one that we want to choose. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit forward. And so this is planning on installing Backtrack on my second hard drive while Windows is installed on the first hard drive itself. And so now we're here ready to install, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the install, and it's going to go ahead and begin the installation of Backtrack. And so I'm going to go ahead and let this finish installing before we come back here on the video. And so now once the installation is complete, we're going to go ahead and choose to restart now. And it's going to go ahead and say to remove the disk. Uh, so what we're going to do is go up here to Devices and I can actually remove the disk here by unchecking it for VirtualBox. I'll just uncheck that there and we're going to go ahead and force the end mount. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and this is not going to reboot my operating system without the actual live CD. And so now you can see here if my login or a boot manager is going to be a little bit different than what the live CD offer. This is going to give me the option to load up backtrack. If I hit the down, there it goes. It'll load up here for me. And once this loads up, you'll see you've got a now a uh, backtrack login. The login's going to be root, so it's just going to be R O O T, and then the password is just going to be root spelled backwards, so T O O R. This is the default user and password combo. And then we've got back here to our root prompt, so I'm going to go ahead and type in start X, and this will go ahead and load us up our GUI. So now you can see that we've got this installed here. If I go up in the terminal and do an fdisk-l, you'll see that we've got both hard drives here, HDA1, which is going to be my Windows hard drive, and then I've got HDB, which is going to be my Linux hard drive. And if I want to find any of the files or start learning how to use or just be able to change any of the files within the Windows operating system, I can use Backtrack here for HDA1. 
And so now if I do a restart, I'm going to close this and actually just do a restart here. I'll open up the terminal and do reboot. You're going to see that we're going to be provided the option here to log back into the Windows operating system. And you can see that now that I'm back here to the screen, I'm going to hit the down arrow. And I do have on my bootloader here the Microsoft Windows XP Professional. I can choose this and I can load up the Windows XP. So this gives me an option to work with both operating systems. Any changes I make to Windows XP, I can of course use Backtrack to modify those changes or actually just see those changes and I can use Windows XP also to see some of the changes that we've got within Backtrack because they're both two hard drives that are plugged into the same machine.